Well, g'day everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you've missed the last couple of weeks, you've missed us heading from Darwin down to Alice Springs where we free camped our way down. It was fantastic, wasn't it? I did enjoy my time free camping, definitely. I'm going to drop some links in for you so you can go back and watch those. Today we head into Alice, but only to do some maintenance before we head a little bit further west towards Uluru. So once you go and get yourself a cold drink, get your feet up for the next 20 minutes or so, come and join us for the adventure. Hi, I'm Steve. And I'm Alison. We decided a couple of years ago that we'd work hard and save all of our money and start living life on our own terms. So we bought a caravan and hit the road on a trip for two all around Australia. So why not come and join us every week for our adventures? As you travel along the Stuart Highway in the Northern Territory, at a lot of the roadside stops um, or rest areas, you find these mobile phone hotspots and the areas to boost your signal. Um, it's a pretty simple process you're supposed to follow to increase your signal. So if you pop your phone in a little carrier and then just let it sit there for about 30 seconds or so, it boosts your signal slightly and then you can try and make a phone call. On the day that we tried, I did try to call Ali, but um, yeah, it failed for me, but that doesn't mean it wouldn't work for you. Ali and I seem to have found ourselves a little friend here. He, uh, he must think we've got food or something because he keeps following us up along the fence. I'd say he's very much domesticated. But we've come down here to look at the, and I hope I pronounced this right, the Antimajiri Man um, here in Aileron, which is um, a very, very impressive sculpture. You can see it as you drive down the highway. Um, he sits about a kilometre off the Stewart Highway, but yeah, really, really imposing on the landscape. But look, Here's our mate, the camel, he's still following us. Oh <laughs> yes. Alrighty, we'll get so we can get a bit closer and we'll check it out. There you go. Alright, we're going to check out the statue now, mate, so we're gonna leave you here. So if you want to come and check out the statue, there's a little walking track, you'll find it right next to the Aboriginal Arts Hut. Um, just follow the signs. It brings you up along a fence line. Looks like they just mow or keep the track in reasonable order. You can't walk up the hill, it's behind some some barbed wire up there but you still bring yourself around to a pretty good viewing point and check it out it's well worth a stop it's a good chance to stretch your legs and yeah just check out something a little bit different as you travel through the territory so here he is the Majiri man he was sculpted by mark dunn he stands 17 meters tall from the ground to the tip of his spear and he weighs eight tons but he's definitely worth stopping and having a look at on your way down to alice i can't believe how tame isn't he? He's obviously someone's pet. <laughs> yeah, it might be a reason he's been segregated from everybody else because everyone else is in the paddock out the front. <laughs> Maybe he's a bit of a shit stirrer. All right, my friend, well, it's time to say goodbye. Exactly. All right, well, we really hope that you enjoyed our friend the camel and the statue that we come to see here in Aileron. It's a fantastic spot to come visit, isn't it? It is quite nice. It's a good place to stop, stretch the legs, and it's um, very interesting art. Yeah, it's certainly something that's worth stopping and having a look at. It's just something different, once again, here in the NT to come and see. Yes. Well, as we said, we stopped to see the Antimajiri man, but far more impressive for us was the Antimajiri woman and child. This uh, statue was absolutely spectacular definitely worth having a look at it. We understand there's another one in the series which is in Western Australia. If you know where it is, hit us up in the comments so we can go and visit it. Right, I'll do 
do my best here. It's really, really windy here at the moment, so we'll just see how we go. But we've just stopped on our way, just outside of Alice Springs. And you can see the big ball there we're about to cross, or we're halfway across the Tropic of Capricorn. So that's the second time we've crossed it. Because we crossed it by out near Rocky. We did. And now we're crossing it almost in the centre of Australia. So what a great thing to do. It is good. Yeah, all we're doing is looking for somewhere so we get a big road train passes. And we found this. <laughs> Anyway, let's get in Alice. Just one more thing before we leave the Tropic of Capricorn. This is also an overnight camping area, so you can stay here for 24 hours. You can have a little campfire and stuff. So if you don't want to stay in Alice and you want to come past and find a pre-camp, this is probably the closest one as you head further north. Roundabout in a while, huh? The Tom Brown roundabout. Yeah, I think um, the last one may have been in Darwin. May have been. It's a good one, though. Look at the mountains around us. Exit the roundabout on the Stewart Highway. Continue on A87 for oh, three kilometres. Yeah. at the Wangardi Caravan Park which is about 10 k's west of town right out here in the west uh, McDonald Ranges and it's a beautiful drive out isn't it Al? It is quite spectacular it's quite mesmerizing actually. Yeah I've never seen ranges like these no. before I'd, I'd be pretty excited to come back and spend some time here for sure. Definitely uh, I'd love to come back and spend some more time in this area. Get on down to the caravan park, I'll let you know about all the prices and I'll give you a bit of a look around when we get down there. But yeah, the drive out here, this is beautiful. It is. Your destination is on the left. So, here we are. We're staying at the Wengardi Caravan Park, which is about 10 kilometres west of Alice Springs. It's right at the base of the ranges. I'll give you a quick look. So this comes through here. You can see all the ranges up here in the background. It's beautiful to look at. The sun's just starting to really light them up at the moment. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon, which is really, really nice. But anyway, a little bit about the caravan park. It costs us $38 a night here. Now we jumped onto a powered site for a couple of nights because we're heading out to Uluru. We'll be off grid for about another, I don't know, maybe 10 days or so. We want to make sure we washed absolutely everything and we get everything fully charged up and cleaned and you know all those administrative type things. We've been off grid now for about seven days anyway so this will be a good opportunity to catch up. But the caravan park itself look really really basic but well, what more do you expect? Um, we've got a nice concrete slab here to put our van on and I can't ask for too much more. Obviously there's toilets and showers. Ali and I don't tend to use those we just use our own facilities inside of the van. There's no dump point here, you do need to take your um, dump point into town. Apparently there's a big facility in town for that. Um, and the other thing that they do here, and they do quite well, is they do a lot of recycling, which is really, really good. You separate all your rubbish out here, put away, big facility for it. Yeah, very, very um, environmentally conscious out here, I would say. But yeah, other than that, it's not a bad spot to come and stay. Um, we certainly feel very safe out here. So it should be a great place to explore the region as we get prepared to head towards Uluru. So the plan for today, this is the first overcast rainy day we've had in a long, long time. So we're going to take advantage of it, just have a bit of a, a nothing day. We're going to go into town, go to Woolies, top off all our groceries, get all those things done. Then we're going to come back here, probably do a little bit of editing this afternoon, watch a movie. The Mighty Penrith Panthers are on TV this afternoon, so we'll sit down and definitely watch that. Um, yeah, and just get ourselves prepared to start heading further west. Our plan over the next few weeks is to head out to Uluru and the Olgas and Kings Canyon and do the Marini Loop and all of those things. And we hope you can join us for all of those future adventures. So because we're having a bit of a lay day here in um, Alice Springs today because it's just cold and just a crappy day to be out and about. It's going to hang around the caravan. It's got to get rid of a little bit of maintenance I've been putting off for a while. Um, we have a caravan inside our caravan, but we still get dust in it from time to time in two very particular places, and we're about to fill them with silicon. The first place and the worst place is just here in the doorstep. So I'll show you where we're at. Just here, I've got the J moulding around here. I've taken that out. 
And if you have a look here, you can see where the floor joins in. And then the checker plate, which they've run around here for your door kick or whatever it is. There's actually a gap there. Now, I've silicon this before because there was no silicon whatsoever in here. But obviously, I didn't fill that gap correctly last time. And that's the only place I'm getting in dust now. So I'm going to get that filled of silicon. And then I'll get all this bolted back up. But... Um, it's certainly something to have a look at if you're getting dust inside your caravan. If you just remove that J-moulding around the step, that's where I find it particularly bad. Um, you can eliminate it pretty quickly with a little bit of silicon. I hate black silicon because as soon as you get on your hands, it stains everything. And uh, typical of me, I have no bloody plastic gloves in the car in the caravan, but she'll be right. I'll get something in there and tune it up. It's always a gift that keeps giving though. And the other area that I've got a silicon is just where these um, water pipes enter into the bottom of the van here. There's plenty of silicon around them from underneath. I've gone up the top there and I've absolutely chocolate it with as much silicon as I can get in there and I can't see daylight anymore. I've got a light going up in the van at the moment. I can't see anything. So I'm pretty confident that I've sealed that gap, but I'll throw a bit more in underneath here and just make sure. A couple of other things I've noticed since I've been down here. These are the um, front wheels on the dual wheel rear axles. Um, and you can see here I've got some exposed wires because the bloody, um, whatever that is, conduit or whatever they call it, that wraps around it, that's all just split. It's been hit by rocks and stuff over time of driving. So I'll get all that sealed off. I've got a little bit more of this in the car, so I'll get that and I'll put it back over and see if I can make it a bit more secure. Um, the backs are good. It's just on the two front tyres. So anyway, I'll get them sorted out while I'm under here as well. So all fixed now. I just put a little bit of tape around the uh, little bit of exposed wire in there. So I sorted all that out, threw a bit more of that wire protector around the outside. And just for good measure, I'll throw in a bit of gaffer tape around the outside of that. So all should be good now. So you saw underneath the van the wiring that I fixed. Um, on closer inspection, we went and had a look, and I had to do three of the four tyres underneath the caravan. You just can't prevent the rock strikes, particularly down gravel roads a lot. It is something that I keep my eye on, but got to admit, sometimes a bit lazy. I just don't get out the van and get it sorted. But we've got a good place to get it done here, so all done now. We should be right to um, take on a few more outback roads. Well, good morning everyone. We've left Alice Springs. Now, don't be too disappointed we didn't show you around in town. We only stopped there so we could do some washing and get ourselves prepared to head out into mm. the Red Centre because we're off to Uluru today or towards Uluru. Yes. We're going to do a couple of free camps on our way out. Tonight in Kurnot, um, uh, Kurnot, I don't know, Rangers I think it is. And then the night after we'll go out to Curtin Springs and then we're off to Uluru, aren't we? We are. Looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, it should be pretty good. But we are going back to Alice. So when we come back on our return visit, after we've done the Marini Loop, then we'll uh, show you around Alice Springs. Yes, hopefully the weather's a bit better. It wasn't real flash yesterday. Oh, no, it started raining. It's bloody freezing at the moment. So we're going to get back in the car and keep moving, I think. <laughs> so what do you think of the drive so far, Al? We're still heading down the Stewart Highway towards the township of Garn, and that's where we'll make our turn to go in towards the Uluru. But the scenery in here is pretty cool, isn't it? It's been very beautiful and now the sun's come out, it's quite spectacular. Well, yeah, I wasn't expecting this. We drove through a lot of just flat open plains this morning and you can see mountains on the horizon. But I didn't expect that we'd see this. It's, um, yeah, really, really spectacular. The scene, as Alison just said, now the sun's come out a little bit on the mountains. It's given it a whole new perspective, isn't it? It has, it has. It's quite beautiful. The plan from here is we're going to head down to Garn. We'll probably stop and have a bit of lunch there. If there's anything worth seeing, we'll uh, give you a bit of a look around. I'm sure it's named Garn because it, the railway's named after it. But anyway, we'll check it out when we get down there. And uh, yeah, and then we're off to our overnight campsite. We stopped at the Kurnow Range overnight camp spot. And I've got to say, it was an absolute disaster zone, wasn't it, Al? It wasn't pretty, no. Lots of um, rubbish, lots of toilet paper. Lots of toilet paper. Books with people and toilet paper. We have no paper. idea. So <laughs> we stopped, we had lunch and we moved on um, rather than stay there. I, I, would, I just wouldn't stay there. But we've come up a little bit further and we're now at the Mount Connor rest area. Um, we're not going to stay here either, but we thought we'd give you a look around because this is a, just absolutely leaps and bounds different in contrast. So reasonably good level site around here. There's um, picnic tables and bins and things like that. There's no rubbish. No, no rubbish, which is 
amazing. Amazing, considering what we just saw. There's some fireplaces here that you can have a fire in and all of those sorts of things. It's just a, a far nicer place. It is. And it's literally 15 k's further up the road. So that was great. But for Ali and I, we're going to continue up the road. We're going to stop at the Mount Connor Lookout and give you a look at that. Um, and then we're going to head on down to Curtin Springs where we're going to stop the next couple of nights and just do a few things down there before we head down to Uluru. Okay. Okay, so just out here in front of us is Mount Connor. This is often mistaken for Uluru when people first come down along the road. I've got to say, we've been in gloomy days all day today. We just got lucky when we got here because the sun's come out just over the top of the mountain right now. So it's a fantastic thing to see. I reckon we're standing about a good 10 k's away from it, but it's bloody huge. All right, directly across the road from the lookout for Mount Connor, you'll find there's a little track, it's quite well marked. Walk to the top of it, all right? So spend three seconds and come over and have a look, because when you get up here, you get an absolutely amazing 360 degree view of all of the plains and Mount Connor, and this um, inland lake. I'm not sure what it's called, but I'll try and find out. So we've got this massive lake out here in front of us, which has some water in it, but not too much, and then right around the plains, and that's the way to Uluru. And there's Mount Connor over there. What a fantastic view it is up here. I tell you what, you're going to get permits and all that sort of stuff to operate drones here in the Territory, but you don't really need it. Come and stand on a sand dune. Check this out. Absolutely amazing. And it's a crappy overcast day too. morning i've got to say for the first time i think everyone on the channel is bloody freezing it was minus four in the caribbean this morning we didn't stay at um Kurnow range rest area it was bloody filthy up there there was used toilet paper absolutely everywhere and we weren't going to walk knee deep through that shit so we come further down the road and we stayed here at Curtin springs which is a little roadhouse you can get fuel there's toilet showers if you want to hook onto a powered site you can do that we took an unpowered site unpowered sites are free here so it's got to pull into the general store let them know that you're going to stay and then go in there and stay for as long as you like. We're about 100 k still until we get down to Uluru and that's what we're doing this morning. So we'll get up, get mobile or get down the road. But if you do come and stay here, there's a little restaurant you can come and get some food at. Um, yeah, there's a bar, there's all that sort of gear. And there's also cabin accommodation if you would prefer that, particularly on these cold nights. But you get a fantastic view of Mount Connor right from the front driveway. All right, we're going to go and scrub some ice off the windshield of the car and get hooked up and get ready to head down towards Uluru. So as I said um, a little bit earlier, it's bloody cold here. I'll just show you the temperature in the van at the moment. It's um, 9.25 in the morning and it's still minus two in here. Although I think it's probably a couple of degrees warmer than that, but it still feels like it's minus two, isn't it, Adele? It's very cold. <laughs> this is when we debate whether we should have got a diesel heater. <laughs> exactly, yeah. We, we spoke about getting a diesel heater. We thought, nah, we're following the sun, we're going everywhere. And I've got to say, we should have known. We're coming out to Central Australia in the middle of winter. It's going to be bloody cold. But there was a cold front that came through the other day, which was unusually for the season, unusual for the season, yes. which has made the daytime maximum temperatures 12 degrees for the next couple of days, and they seem to be the same couple of days that will be hanging around at Uluru. And then when we leave, <laughs> they warm back up to the mid 20s. Anyway, it is what it is. We'll get uh, packed up and get on the road. Well, that's the end of our time here in Curtin Springs. What did you think about it, Al? I actually enjoyed my time here at Curtin Springs. It was good downtime. It certainly was. We had a couple of quiet days of doing absolutely nothing except just sitting around, resting, a little bit of work, a little bit of editing, and that was about it, wasn't it? And we caught up with some fellow travellers, Julie and Craig from WA, which was lovely to meet them and um, spend some time with them. Certainly was. Lovely people. We hope to catch up with them again one day on the road or when yes. we get over to Western Australia. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, we had a really good time here. 
Anyway, on to bigger and better things. Come and join us next week when we visit Australia's biggest icon, Uluru. You looking forward to that, Elle? I am looking forward to seeing Uluru and um, the office as well. Oh, for sure. Anyway, if you liked today's episode, make sure you hit the like button. If you've got any questions or comments about the episode, hit us up in the comment section. And of course, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, I was going to say, what are you waiting for? Please consider <laughs> doing so. It allows our channel to grow. You guys have yourselves a great week. We'll see you next Saturday at 9 o'clock. Bye-bye. See you next week. Oh, I think Alice and I... Oh, wish I could do that. <laughs>